We're building a check splitting app, which means users have to be able to enter the cost of their check, how many people are sharing the cost, and how much tip they want to leave. Hopefully, already you can see that means we need to add three at state properties, because there are three pieces of data we're expecting users to enter into our app. So, start by adding these three properties to our content view struct. At state, private var checkout amount, equals empty string. At state, private var number of people, equals two. At state, private var tip percentage equals two. As you can see, that gives us an empty string for the check amount, a default value of two for the number of people, and a default value of two for the tip percentage. You might wonder why we're using strings for the check amount, when clearly an int or a double would work better. Well, the reason is that we have no choice. SwiftUI must use strings to store text field values. Having two people be the default for splitting a check is sensible. It won't be right a lot of the time, but it's still a good default. But having a tip percentage of two might seem odd. Do we really intend to leave a 2% tip? Well, no. Instead, we're using two here because we're going to use that to select values from a predetermined array of tip sizes, so you can see different picker styles in action. We need to store the list of possible tip sizes somewhere, so please add this fourth property beneath the previous three. Let tip percentages equals an array of 10, 15, 20, 25, and zero. Now you can see that a tip percentage of two actually means a 20% tip, because that's the values of tip percentages two. We're going to build up the form step by step, starting with a text field where users can enter the value of their check. Modify the body property of this. Form, section, text field, amount, text, dollar check amount. That will create a scrolling entry form of one section, which in turn contains one row, our text field. When you create text fields in forms, the first parameter is a string that gets used as a placeholder. Gray text shown inside the text field, giving users an idea of what should be in there. The second parameter is the two-way binding to our check amount property, which means as the user types, that property will be updated. One of the great things about the at state property wrapper is that it automatically watches for changes. And when something happens, it will automatically reinvoke the body property. That's a fancy way of saying it will reload your UI to reflect the change state, and it's a fundamental feature of the way Swift UI works. To demonstrate this, add a second section with a text view showing the value of check amount, like this. Section, text, dollar, string interpolation, check amount. We'll be making that show something else later on, but for now, please run the app in a simulator so you can try it yourself. Tap on the check amount text field, then enter some text. It doesn't have to be a number, anything will do. What you'll see is that as you type, the text you in the second section automatically and immediately reflects your actions. This synchronization happens because, one, our text field has a two-way binding to the check amount property. Two, the check amount property is marked with at state, which automatically watches for changes in the value. Three, when an at state property changes, SwiftUI will reinvoke the body property, i.e. reload our UI. And four, therefore the text view will get the updated value of check amount. The final project won't show check amount in that text view, but it's good enough for now. I want to address one important problem. When you tap to enter text in our text field, users see a regular alphabetical keyboard. Yes, they can tap a button on the keyboard to get to the numbers screen, but it's annoying and not really necessary. Fortunately, text fields have a modifier that lets us force a different kind of keyboard, keyboard type. We can give this a parameter specifying the kind of keyboard we want. And in this instance, either .numberpad or .decimalpad are good choices. Both of those keyboards will show the digits zero through nine for users to tap on. But .decimalpad also shows a decimal point, so users can enter check amounts like 32.50 rather than just whole numbers. So modify your text field to this, .keyboardType.decimalpad. You'll notice I added a line break before .keyboardType and also indented it one level deeper than text field. That isn't required, but it can help you keep track of which modifiers apply to which views. Go ahead and run the app now, and you should find you can only type numbers into the text field. Now a big warning, the number pad and decimal pad keyboards tell SwiftUI to show digits zero through nine, and optionally also decimal point. 
but that doesn't stop users from entering other kinds of values. For example, if they have a hardware keyboard, they can type whatever they like. And if they copy some text from elsewhere, they'll be able to paste that into the text field no matter what's inside the text. That's okay though, we'll be handling that eventuality later.